One of the questions I get a lot when people find out about my off-grid lifestyle is how do I handle my toilet situation? You know, do I have an outhouse? Uh, do I have a regular flush toilet? Well, the answer on both counts is no. I don't have either of those things. What I do have is something between a composting basic toilet uh, and an incinerating toilet. I, I took the things I didn't like about the composting and the incinerating. With the composting, it was like the long-term handling, you know, having to put it on a pile, rotation, and all that stuff. I took that out of the equation. And then there's the extreme cost of a incinerating toilet and the fact that they are very energy hungry. Uh, whether it be electric or propane or natural gas, they require a lot of energy and special liners to go in them. This is a much simpler setup that I designed myself and it ends up producing something that I think is um, a lot easier to manage. As you can see, it's just a, a plywood box mounted to the floor. Corian countertop material makes up the surface and we've got the elongated bowl seat. Down here you'll see there are hinges attached. It's because this seat lifts. It lifts up and allows me to access the inside of the box for switching out the bucket that is on the inside. And One of the keys to making sure that you have a toilet in your house that doesn't stink or smell bad or be objectionable is to have really good cover material and making sure that you thoroughly cover and that's over here on the left hand side. These are fine pine shavings that I pick up in bales. Um, they're in kitty litter boxes. I, I set this distance so that these kitty litter uh, buckets are ideal to set alongside. And when you're done doing your number two, you just shake out some shavings directly on top and cover it up. And that will knock down about 90% of any types of odors that you may find that you have um, with a toilet inside the house that doesn't flush. But another way that I manage that smell is you'll notice that this looks like a dryer vent. You know, and that's exactly what it is. It runs up through the ceiling and continues above this bathroom area. And another short section of of this very same dryer vent and it goes out through the wall of my cabin and inside, I mean it's inside that vent right at the wall I have adapted a three inch computer fan. They take very little energy and that fan will run continuously. It's on right now and because it's running continuously it puts this entire container and all of that dryer vent under negative air pressure. Negative air pressure is just a real soft, gentle vacuum. And that vacuum means that even while you're using this toilet, you don't have any odors associated with it. Um, you know, a lot of people say we're going to light that candle or light that match or hit that air freshener spray really, really hard, and it just masks these odors. With this particular setup, I don't have a problem with that. I'm going to pause the video right now and I'm going to elevate the seat so that you can see the inside components of this box. Okay, here is the inside of the box. And as you can see, it's just a basic Home Depot bucket. I've got standard plumbing fittings. I had to make something particularly long to go from the front where the urine diverter is and it slides around to the side and, and goes into a standard adapter that you would find with any normal P-trap. This takes all of the urine down through the floor underneath the concrete slab that the cabin is sitting on and into the gray water holding tank where it's uh, siphoned out to a raised leach mound outside. As you can see this here is a urine diverter. It mounts directly underneath the seat and I've got this piece of PVC piping attached to the bottom of it and it's got a slash cut. It's cut at about a 45 degree angle. And what this allows is this allows for the the drain to self-align inside that P-trap. That P-trap is just sitting on top of a, a large block of treated lumber nested down inside a pan. And that pan there is just as, as a, a, a measure that I take to prevent anything from getting onto the floor if somebody's aim isn't quite so good and you know ladies you sit down to pee but 
as a man to use this toilet, you also have to sit down to pee. There is no standing up using this toilet. So when I need to put it down, because this is the less uh, friendly looking part of this particular uh, type of toilet system, is it, you know, it, it's kind of uh, gross if to most people. It, you do get used to it, but the insides of your standard plumbing pipes at home are also kind of gross. So I'm going to grab hold of this catch right here, release that, and when I lower this, you see that to start to line up, and that just self-aligns inside that particular P-trap drain that's in there. Now I'm going to raise the lid, as you can see when I raise the lid, it's a little less objectionable, and you can see the, the urine diverter right here and the bucket inside and whenever you know you need to cover anything that's in there you just grab a scoop full of sawdust you shake out what it might fall off and just very very particularly easy just shake it off and cover whatever you you've produced in there and then once the bucket's full we hoist it up the lid itself obviously we put on gloves and we take the bucket out and we store it outside until it's ready to burn but that's an entirely different video on how I burn or incinerate all of my solid waste here at the house so I'm going to pause the video again you won't notice it and I'm going to light a bamboo skewer and then blow it out so that you can observe the smoke trail pulling down into the toilet because of that negative air pressure Okay, here is the bamboo skewer. I'm going to blow it out. And as you can see, you can see the smoke trail being pulled down in. It was very brief. Okay, now it was just a, a very brief. Hopefully you'll be able to see that smoke trail being pulled down into the box, which is going up the vent that I showed you. When you're sitting on this toilet, it's just a subtle breeze, and it will... You can discern the smallest of drafts, just a very small airflow. And it's just enough to keep the odor and the stink from escaping this particular box. Now, you notice that inside that bucket, there's no trace of toilet paper. Well, this is where we place the toilet paper once it's been used. That's also something that we can burn, or you can just put it in your regular garbage and have them take it away to the landfills. But it, because it's activated by your hand, it opens it up, and you can toss in. Always make sure that it's tossed in, you know, soiled side down, so that the next person comes in, they don't have to to see that. That's just being courteous. Uh, there is a kitchen sprayer that I installed on this one, and that kitchen sprayer uh, allows me to rinse out because. If all I ever did was put urine down this urine diverter, it would start to cultivate and grow bacteria. And, and we don't want that because it would close that off pretty quickly and minimize that flow. So this hand sprayer allows me to take my household water and just spray and clean that up and rinse out that pee trap the same way that when you flush your toilet, you're putting in fresh clean water down your toilet. And that keeps me from clogging up the pipe and, and prevents bacterial buildup from the urine. It also adds and dilutes the urine into my gray water tank outside. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up because it does do a better job at keeping this, the smell down as long as you keep it closed. Uh, and then of course, on a later video, as I mentioned before, I will show you how I dispose of it. Something that I only have to do about once every six to eight weeks depending on how much we use it. Uh, this is just a sneak peek at my water processing center. Uh, that's going to be another video maybe next week. I will break down and grate the tail exactly every component that is here, what I use and why I use it to give us potable drinking water for cooking, drinking, and bathing. And this is, all of this is usually harvested from just rainwater off of a roof. 
So there it is, YouTubers. I'm just going to do a quick pan of the room. You can see that that trash can we used to put the waste paper in. The kitty litter buckets that we put the sawdust in that we use as for cover material. The toilet with the elongated bowl. That, the elongated bowl is kind of nice. The smaller bowls don't give you a lot of room to, um, to fit everything in that space. And the, the wife added this thing right here because of the, the clunk noise. This is actually a, a, a this right here is actually a cloth that covers a um, like a, a U bracket that holds the, the this dryer vent tight to the wall. It's fastened with screws, and uh, she just covered it up because she didn't like the way that it looked. Also, it, it made a lot of noise banging the seat against it. You know. So, if you have any questions or comments? Uh, regarding this system. I'm sure there will be some questions. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, there'll be more videos to come. Thank you.